My mother came home from work. She had been to the commissary to pick up a few groceries, and it was probably four after four. And she opened the door and called for my sister, you know, to come help with the groceries. And she said, I knew something was up the minute she didn't show up. She went into my sister's bedroom, and my sister was laying on the bed. Uh, you know, blood everywhere. Done crystal meth. I used to smoke ounces of marijuana every single day because I distributed marijuana. <clears throat> and when I was 17, I had a, a boyfriend, and he had written a letter. Uh, to me, and that letter was uh, intercepted and read, and uh, there was a huge parental power, if you will. When we looked at the bathroom ordinance, that was brought up a few times, uh, that Alabama has a history of taking a certain class of people, and it's, it's always going to be a minority, taking a certain class of people and putting them aside and saying, you know what, you're going to have different rules, but that's okay, there's only a few of you. If you don't like it, you can leave. <laughs> that's, that's Alabama's attitude uh, toward that, and so most recently that was transgender people that, that got that treatment. But you don't have to look back very far in Alabama history to see other people getting that same treatment. And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. I used to be a very bad fornicator, addicted to porn, masturbating, all kinds of things, even bisexuality some. I've even sold my body for sex. I'm still, even though I'm a lesbian, I'm still an Alabama girl. I'm still kind of a country, hick, redneck kind of gal, driving pickup trucks and riding my horses and hanging out and, and, and just, um, you know, just like everybody else, just, just living my life. I'm living right and holy before God's eyes. I have the right to make righteous judgment if I'm living right before God. If I'm not, if I'm living in fornication, I have no right to make righteous judgment. Nobody invited you to come over here and bother us. Jesus her. Christ invited me. No, he did. Jesus Christ invited all of us to fellowship over here. You coming over here disturbing our fellowship? That right there is not Jesus Christ. That right there is you being ignorant and coming over here and deliberately starting crap, man. You just hate Jesus Christ no, in your I heart. No, I love Jesus Christ in my heart. Your heart testifies against you. The way I look at it is, if I can live a radical life for, for Satan, the devil, if I can live a radical life that way, then I can live a radical life doing what Jesus said of taking up my cross daily, like he said in the Bible. And if I take up my cross daily, then I'm not going to be a practicing homosexual or bisexual or a fornicator, etc. Those people are out there that believe that, and you know, too bad for them. Um, because I think that they're wasting a lot of their life by being consumed with, I guess at the best, worry that someone's not adhering to their religious belief, and at worst, um, consuming themselves with hate and maybe even literally ruining their own lives, right? And poisoning their own lives with that sort of thing. If you want to live here, you need to be like everybody else is still alive in Alabama. So, you know, she was cast aside, shunned, uh, wasn't welcome with open arms, you know, like you're supposed to be, I guess, when you go to church. Watching the gay pride or homosexual pride parade go by, you know, I, all I mostly shared to the transgender people, et cetera, is that Jesus can change you. 